again, and we are going to finish now our part two Bible study of um, waging spiritual warfare against Wicca. Okay, and this is actually part three. Uh, so, we were discussing about the various uh, ways that people in Wicca view God. There's duotheism, there's pan uh, polytheism, and then the, um, also there's some that hold the monotheism. Which was I mentioned uh, the combination of joining in belief in the horn god and the moon god, god is. Uh, then there's the, uh, some Wiccans hold to the worship of pantheism. Uh, they believe that panthe uh, pantheism teaches that God is in everything, and, and in everything there is God. I mean, there's no distinct, according to the uh, Columbia Encyclopedia, quote, there is no nothing separate or distinct from God, for God is the universe. If, on the other hand, the conception taken as the uh, foundation of the systems is that the great inclusive unity is the world itself, or the universe, God is swallowed up in that unity, which may be this designated as nature. So, they believe that God is the universe. But the Bible distinctly says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And what's in the heavens? The universe. So how can, if God is the universe, how did the universe create itself? That means the universe being God, God created himself. Um, but it doesn't say that. It says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, so polyth uh, pantheism is incorrect in saying that God is the universe, and God is in everything. Now, God oversees everything, and God is knowing all things, and God is all-powerful over all things, but he's not all things. That's, if that was the case, then God is this uh, couch here. <laughs> uh, God is the moon, which, of course, they believe. Uh, you know, so... Uh, in the scriptures that you read the other day, that uh, I am the Lord, I share not my glory with anyone. And what does that mean? In Isaiah. In Isaiah. So, we look at the sun and the moon and the sky and, you know, the beauty of a sunset and we say, wow, that's beautiful. Well, God doesn't share, share his glory with anyone. So, if that sunset was God, then he's sharing his glory with the sunset. And then it's equal. So. Um, remember the Thanksgiving hike that we were on um, a couple of years ago up in North Carolina? We were taking a family hike to a waterfall there, and um, we were wanting to collect some beautiful fall leaves. And um, we were threatened actually by a park ranger if we picked any leaves that we were going to be arrested. So, um, I guess that's just another example there of how people are even, you know, worshiping trees and things. To them, it's a god or something. I'm not sure how they do that. Yeah, and uh, it's just all putting more emphasis on the creation rather than the creator. Um, you know, you can't touch that rock and move it. You can't take that leaf. Uh, but you can use God's name in vain. That's fine. That's protected speech. Um, <laughs> So, some Wiccans hold to a universalist belief system of a supernal god and goddess. Um, to the mother goddess, she could be manifested as a, the Germanic um, Easter, or the Hindus Kali. Kali is a, a statue of a woman, breasted woman, with ten arms and all this stuff. You know. um, or the uh, Catholic Mary, you know, the, the Mary and the child, the mother and the child, it all goes back to that same type of worship. It goes back to Egypt and uh, with uh, Isis and Osiris and all this. Uh, so this Catholic Mary they're talking about is not the Mary that we know of in the Book of Luke that gave birth to the mother Jesus, uh, the baby Jesus. Uh, this is a, another Mary, like you have other Jesuses uh, that are not the true Jesus. Uh, so then, meanwhile, the sun god or the horned god can 
be viewed by some Wiccans as the Celtic uh, Sununus, or the ancient Greek god Dionysius, Dionysius or the uh, Judeo-Christian god Yahweh. So there again, it's not the true Mary, or it's not true Yahweh, or, or Jesus, or any of this that they're talking about. They're talking about another one. Um, and then Paul said that there is some that will tell you of another Jesus, and you may follow him and farewell with him. But that's actually not going to produce the same effect that you desire when your life ends. Um, so you have to make sure that that which you're following is the true creator God, and not one of these manifestations of Satan in the form of these other um, gods or goddesses. Um, look at it like uh, uh, this, you know, that in this universalist belief that with Wicked, they believe that uh, like Jesus and uh, maybe Buddha and Muhammad and Confucius and all these um, great prophets and philosophers and stuff like that, that they say that they're, uh, they're God. They're basically, they're a facet of God. It's kind of like you have a diamond, and you see that diamond, and say, no one, can, no one can deny that that's a diamond. And you have a facet there, and say, well, no one can deny that that's a facet. Well, what they're doing is saying, well, this facet is uh, it's Jesus. He's God. And you got another universalist way to get to God, and so forth. Uh, but the moment you say that, you know, this facet is God, like Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no one else that can come to me. No, the way by which man may come to me, uh, come to the Father except by me. Uh, once you have inclusiveness, imperialism, as they like to say, the moment you use a, a one God, one way system, that's it. We can't tolerate that. We can be tolerated. Tolerating a lot of stuff, and you should tolerate us, but we won't tolerate the one God system. And uh, so that's the difference. So always remember that, like, are you following a facet, multifaceted, universalist God worship system, or are you following the monotheistic, God centered, created, the creator God centered way, versus other monotheistic ways, uh, religions too, uh, like you got Judeos. Uh, the, the Jewish system, you got the uh, Islamic system, they're worshipping one God, but there again, it, it doesn't allow you to get eternal life through them. They have their system of works and this type of thing like that. And so at the end of it, life, you stand before this creator God who you think you've been worshipping, and it's been a manifestation of someone other than the true and living God, you're going to be surprised. So that's what we're doing this study, to help families to be able to uh, know what is right, you shouldn't let your kids uh, read books, Harry Potter books, um, you know, as some means of, oh, it's just entertainment, it's make-believe and this type of thing, because uh, you can say that, and Satan would love for you to say that, but behind that is a spirit, and it's an evil spirit. Um, and they, your children will be destroyed. Uh, just get back with us in 20 years and let us know how things are going. Um, I was going to add um, that we know some friends that live close to downtown Greenville, and um, they had a neighbor that lived down the street from them that they were trying to minister to he and his kids, and he had let his kids watch this Harry Potter movie, and they thought, oh, this is just make-believe or whatever, and um, in the middle of the movie, his one of his girls had a little baby doll that just started walking across the floor and so it, it is real demonic power in these movies and, and Harry Potter games and whatever else they're producing. Oh yeah, and you who are out there practicing witchcraft right now, you know it the very same. Um, how that you can produce effects, move objects and all this stuff and read uh, spirits uh, of dead loved ones, something like that. And it sounds all sexy and, and uh, fashionable and that type thing and, and wonderful and you've got power and that type of thing, but it's, it's a pseudo power. It's like somebody gives you a, a suitcase of $100 bills, you're like, wow, this is great. You take it to the bank and they open it and take your pen and mark it across.
across and say, everyone just fake bills. And you get thrown in jail. You know? well, that's what, what's going to happen at the end of your life. you got all this wonderful idea that this is all powerful. This is wonderful. i got the ability to do this and that. And at the end of your life, you stand before God, He's going to take His counterfeit pen and go for it. And uh, you're going to be seen as having followed a counterfeit God. Um, and so I wouldn't trust in this stuff like you're doing. Um, so in this uh, multifaceted idea of God and this universalism, uh, always discern the person that's speaking to you as, uh, are they monotheistic? Uh, in that, the true monotheistic way, that Jesus is God, Lord, and Creator. Because if you think about it, um, Jesus was there, um, in the Colossians it says, by Him all things are created, and was, there was not anything made that was made, except that was made by, by Him, speaking about Jesus. But in Genesis it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and it says also that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. So you had God, who is seen as uh, Jehovah Elohim, God Almighty, and you had the Spirit of God present at creation, and you had the Word of God present at creation. And it's not three gods, it's one God. It's just like I'm speaking here, I'm speaking, and uh, it's not a be a total ability to make the, the case for it. the Trinity, but it's pretty good. Uh, you had God, whose knowledge wanted to create, so he spoke forth the word. And in order for you to speak, you have to breathe in, breathe out. Air is, uh, is used synonymously in the Greek for spirit. And with the spirit moving across the face, the face of the deep, God spoke forth his spirit, uh, his wind, as it were, the word of God and, and all creation was made. That's monotheism. Uh, but their version of Jesus is a spirit being equal to that of other spirits or deities. Um, like I had a, a guy, an old guy, that um, he was in the Masons and he said, uh, uh, I said, do you believe in Jesus? That he's the son of God. He says, oh yes, he's the son of God. And I said, well, let me ask you, is, is he God? He said, no, he's not God. Jesus is not God. He's the Son of God. And I said, no, you got it wrong. I said, you'll find out, because he got all upset and everything. I said, you'll find out when you stand before the grand architect of the universe one day, and, and you find out that uh, you've been uh, rejecting the Son of God as being God himself. Of course, I use that term loosely with him, the grand architect of the universe, because that's what all Masons and all people in Scottish Rites and, and all these uh, secret organizations you know, do the special handshake and all that stuff. But the fact is, there's nothing secret about it. Uh, the only thing is, it's secret from them what the truth is. Um, that that the grand architect of the universe, in its truest sense, is God. And there's none other. So, uh, but in, of course, Masonic order, the same thing built on witchcraft. If you look at the, the degrees between witchcraft, the Masonic order, and uh, Mormonism. They all have the same... 32 degrees of levels of power and such thing, advancing into light and really advancing in the darkness. Like uh, the blasphemous thing about Masonic Order is that in the first three degrees, the initiate comes in and stands before the, uh, the Lodge, the Grand Lodge Master, and, and he's blindfolded and he's asked uh, by the Grand Lodge Master, What have you come here to seek? And he's all blindfolded and like, I come to seek light. Well, you don't find light in darkness. You find light in the Word, and the Holy Spirit enlightens you, and opens up your understanding. Whereas in witchcraft and in masonry and this type of thing, you come to man and ask them for wisdom. Um, what I'm telling you now, you don't have to listen to me. You can get the Bible and find this all out yourself. Um, but whereas in all this hidden stuff, the occult stuff, you have to go to some person like a, a Jane, uh, like this uh, Gardner fella, and Donald Few, and uh, Margaret Adler, and ask them, what is truth? And they give you truth, but then next week, the truth has changed, because nature changes. <laughs> um, yes, and to reiterate, um, the scripture here in John eight twelve it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Yeah, so when you walk in
in darkness, you'll you'll be more confused. If you walk in light, you will have the pathway straight. It's like one time we went to Tennessee and we went toward to a cave and we got really deep into the cave and of course they had it lit and everything like that. It was power and that type thing. It was electrical lighting. So the woman said, Okay, we're gonna shut the lights off and 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 see what happens. So they turned the lights off and it's like bam, it's all totally black. You didn't even see your hand in front of your face. And that's the way it is we think, oh, we have light. But the light that we're following after is an artificial light. Like, that wasn't the light of the sun. It was, a, it was an artificial light. And then when we are seeking light from man's wisdom, philosophies, and satanic uh, power, and Luciferianism, and that type of thing, it's a fake light. And uh, our pathway will not be lit, uh, as it says in Psalms. Uh, it says that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. And to reiterate the point that um, that when these people, they get up into these high levels in the Masonic order, um, most people think there's only 32 degrees in the Masons. But we met a man one day and took his wife to the fabric store um, who is actually a missionary now in Jerusalem. And he had risen to the 100th degree of being Grand Lodge Master. And at that point, he said he had, like, all these satanic powers, but he said he had no light in his soul, and he was very troubled. And um, he was able to get free from the Masons and to get genuinely born again. And when he got saved, and he was willing to repent from all that, he said he had four bookshelves full of witchcraft uh, books on how to cast spells and all this kind of stuff. And he took them all out to the backyard and had a big um, bonfire and um, was totally transformed into the light of Jesus from that point on. And now he's a wonderful missionary in Israel. Yeah, so it's we can beg the, the question now. Do you have peace in your whole, in your heart right now? This uh, thing that you're searching, will you ever find it? Uh, let's see, the Bible says that they will say, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. And uh, Jesus said, I shall send the Comforter unto you. Uh, so are you being comforted in this uh, ever-changing way of the nature of religion? It's just some things that, you know, you need to ask yourself. And um, truly then uh, uh, look into Christianity. Give it a second thought. And uh, so this type of person, uh, we need to ask the person who's denying Jesus, uh, who's in this Wicca, who suspect that, ask them if they have a spirit guide. You know, like there's a woman downtown Greenville, she has a health food store. Uh, her name's Terry. And so, a friend of ours was seeing her uh, and, and she's an herbalist and that type thing, so uh, our friend was kind of sick and so she went to her and then she sat and asked her um, if she was Christian. And she said, oh, I'm a Christian. And so, uh, you know, Terry said that. And then so she said, uh, uh, let me ask you, do you have a spirit guide? And she says, oh yes, I have a spirit guide. And she gave the name and, and it's kind of like her voice changed too when she gave the name of the spirit guide. So, uh, basically, a spirit guide is none other than a, a devil, a uh, fallen angel. And so people communicate with these fallen angels and think that they're, you know, uh, doing something great. Uh, when really they're talking to a deceiver. Uh, so this person who's like that, blinded by this strange uh, um, spirit, and this strange fire and belief system conjured up by the enemy of, of, of God. And his enemy is Satan, um, whose craft must be resisted and rejected in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says that resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So if you're if you're like the Bible talked about the madman of Gadara, he he was so filled up with devils that he when he saw Jesus he cried out to him and he wanted Jesus, but then at the same time he he cried out and the devils that were in him cried out and didn't want to leave him. But then they, of course, didn't want to be cast out to the deep yet, either. So, uh, as it turned out, Jesus cast out the devils, and the man was 
set free. And that's the way you can be. You can be set free if you uh, resist the devil and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and repent of your Wicca and all this stuff. Um, so, the next part here, uh, we'll briefly touch on, and we may be running out of time again, but uh, Wiccans believe in spirit beings, angels, and or manifestations of God in material nature who could, quote, be evoked and ritual, unquote. Um, so, on the one hand, this speaks of almost like a fourth aspect. You have monotheistic viewpoint, um, I mean a duotheistic viewpoint, polytheistic, pantheistic, and this is more like a, uh, even agnostic and atheist can embrace this viewpoint, which believes that uh, there are spirit beings, angels, and are manifestations of God in material nature. And then those things can be evoked in ritual, uh, such as like some kind of a uh, seance or something, or some kind of a uh, sacrifice. Uh, or maybe some other means. Uh, there's some Wiccans who are atheists who hold to the idea in uh, Jungian um, aharotypes. I'm realizing that name there, but aharotypes that exist with the subconscious and could also be evoked with rituals. Uh, further quoting High Priestess Vivian Crowley, the God and Goddess manifest. Uh, to us in dreams and visions. So, even though they don't really believe in God system, they believe that um, if there's some kind of God system, like the God and Goddess, they can manifest themselves to us in a dream or could be conjured up in a uh, ritual. Um, this system here, Jungism, is also it was formed, formulated by a man named Carl Jung. Um, so he believed that in our subconsciouses, it, uh, uh, we have this idea of what influences we've had as a child and that later on plays out in our, in our being, uh, how we act and react and that type of thing. Uh, and then quoting again Donald Few, uh, we are, but we are a nature religion and fundamentals, uh, a fundamental truth of nature is that everything changes. As I mentioned long ago, so everything's changing. You can have a monotheistic, polytheistic, no religion. And, uh, Satan doesn't care. He's going to manifest himself to you, uh, even if you're a stone wall. He, he, he wants to have your allegiance. Uh, whereas God said, have no other gods before me. Now remember what Jesus said in Matthew 7, uh, 13 through 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go thereat. So you may be on this broad road right now, and you can actually do a U-turn. God allows that. And where you turn away from this, turn to the true and living God, and come to him through the way, which is Jesus, and through his shed blood, dying in your place, and that type of thing, you can be born again, and and reject and be cleaned of all these devils right now that you may be being plagued by. Um, so I think we're going to wrap this session up here and begin the next part, which is not too much more. Um, a little bit more elaboration on uh, some of these philosophies of uh, this nature, religion, public. Thanks. We'll see you in a few. Thank you.